Hey kids, Rex here. Welcome back to day two and week two. Today's reflection question. If you could check a song that would play every time you entered a room, not just your theme song like before. If you could pick a song that played every time you entered any room, what song would it be and why? All right, see you later. Hey, all right. Uh, today, uh, I'm recording on Tuesday the 6th. I'm wearing my PJs, though. Got my uh, Woodbury High School track uh, uh, shirt on. W missing uh, the track season, so I thought I'd think about that and rep that. And I've got my robe. Uh, so uh, you hopefully you heard from the school that we're doing some spirit days coming up. Uh, today is the first one. It's uh, PJ day. Next week, we got them every day. So keep posted, and uh, you'll probably see me uh, rep a couple of those spirit wares. All right. Uh, don't forget, after the video, go into the Rex Reflection question. I've had a lot of fun. We're going to hear some of uh, your responses to one of those reflection questions from last week. And be thoughtful. Two to three complete sentences. It's been fun reading those. Mrs. Tramples had fun reading those as well uh, in, the, in our five, six hour. And so I've been talking with her and she says hello and she misses everybody too, just like I do. Um, all right, we've got seven things on our agenda uh, today. We have a short chapter, so I don't mind having a bunch of things on our agenda today, check-ins. Uh, one, I'm gonna talk about the bonus assignment that I, I put out there on day one. Uh, two, uh, I'm gonna talk about reading quizzes. We're still doing those, we've changed expectations. Three, uh, I'm gonna talk about the <clears throat> contact information uh, form. You may have noticed that. I'm also updating that to include reading, uh, online reading resources. So I'll talk about what's in there. Uh, four, uh, student selfies. Mr. Adi is in charge of our yearbook. I'm gonna talk about some of the, the things that he's asking for you out there in internet land. Five, student activities uh, from Rex. I've got a list of things that you're doing out there uh, from a previous uh, Rex reflection. Uh, six, I'm gonna have a new activity called show and tell. It'll be ongoing and I'll talk a little bit about what that'll look like. And then seven, I'm gonna play a blues song for you or a couple of uh, verses. Um, and that's our day. And then we'll get into our read aloud, see what's happening with Zinkoff. Uh, but let's take a look out the window and see what's happening in the neighborhood. Again, it's Tuesday. It's supposed to be a high of 67 degrees. I don't know, I, I didn't sleep very well last night. So around, I forget what it was, it's like four, I think it was like five in the morning, a, a very brief uh, but pretty powerful uh, lightning and thunderstorm rolled through Minneapolis. So I don't know if you saw that out in Cottage Grove. It was pretty cool. I just kind of watched the flashes and felt the rumbles. But the birds are chirping. It's pretty nice out. So I've got the window open today and it's supposed to get sunny. I'm going to go for a run. So I hope you're keeping active. All right. Our first day uh, or our first uh, piece on our agenda is a bonus assignment. I've already seen about three uh, responses and those have been really fun and I've gotten a lot of good feedback uh, from those students who uh, are participating in that. I did send an email out to your families so hopefully they're encouraging you and facilitating you to have those conversations. It's really important. I know day one's video was a bit somber or serious and I'm okay with that. Uh, sometimes life is somber and serious but um, um, have those conversations. I know that means a lot to those people who you're reaching out to. I know it's meant a lot to the people I've reached out to. So get that bonus assignment done and send me an email. The directions are in that bonus assignment of how to send me an email. It's been fun reading those responses and I've gotten a lot of good feedback from families and students. Two, reading quizzes. We're still expecting you to do your reading quizzes. The link is now live. Uh, as an update, I told you this two weeks ago, you don't have to, or last week, you don't have to have a monitor password anymore. So click on the link and just go and uh, find your quiz. Same as before, if you don't have a quiz in there, just send me a message in Schoology or send me an email about your book and that'll count. We've changed the expectation from seven to five. I know a lot of people are struggling to find um, reading material and uh, um, there are, again, I'll talk about how to get some online books uh, in a little bit. So reading quizzes, five books for the trimester three, not seven. Three, agenda item three, reading resources and contact information. So I originally on day one on Monday, I updated, I created a document with how to contact me. I've updated at the bottom of that now. 
with online reading resources. So Mr. Adi, our media center specialist, our librarian, has given us a lot of great resources. For example, uh, uh, Washington County has some online, some free books available. You can read from your, your, if you, um, from your devices. Audible has, during this uh, challenging time, provided free services for some books. So um, check out that, that document. It's called Mr. Emmer's Contact Information and Online Reading Resources. And um, if, you're, if you don't have any books at home, that could be a good resource for you. So thank Mr. Adi, too, if you want to send him an email. Agenda item for student selfies. Mr. Adi, again, is in charge of our, our yearbook. Uh, hopefully, um, um, uh, I, I believe the school has messaged your families. But if not, uh, the language arts teachers. So me, in my distance learning folder, I have a link called student selfies yearbook. Um, uh, yearbook submission student selfies there's a link right in my distance learning folder and you have until 3 p.m this friday uh to take some selfies of you distance learning and uh submitting that to that form so click on the link it's a uh, lead you to a google form where you could upload your files of you uh distance learning or being active at home in whatever ways you're doing and uh, Mr. Adi is going to be making sure those get into our yearbook in a fun and creative way and making them the best of a, a, a tough situation. So again, follow that link. You have until 3 p.m. this Friday. Uh, agenda number five, student activities. All right. Uh, this was really fun seeing what you're all up to. I think the question was, what are the most fun or interesting activities you've done since spring break and while we've been on social distancing and social isolation? And so I thought I'd share with us just a list. I'm not calling out names, just to give you some ideas. Some of them were pretty fun. Um, I might repeat some of them as I, I've made the list. Um, one of you got interviewed by reporters. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, a lot of people being outside a lot. Uh, playing video games is a popular one. Somebody built a cardboard fort. And that sounded pretty cool. So, uh, a couple people uh, had talked about trampolines. One of you had a broken trampoline. Sorry about that. That's a bummer. I uh, heard a lot about playing softball outside, basketball, and playing catch. I miss playing catch as well. A lot of people, uh, I heard a few responses about drawing, so getting out and uh, being creative. Uh, somebody is taking about a four wheeler and they sent a picture. And um, that goes to my next agenda item is show and tell. I'll talk about that and have the picture of this four wheeler, the whole front end's taken apart. Uh, painting Bart Simpson or Powerpuff Girls. A couple of people did travel during spring break. I did too. I went to Canada. So hopefully uh, I heard Disney, Mexico, uh, Arizona, the Grand Canyon. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that one. I don't remember my note to myself. Oh, Alcatraz, um, before the shutdown. So it sounds like y'all made it back. I know we uh, got out of Canada just a couple days before international travel uh, got restricted. People are having Nerf Wars. Um, people are doing chalk art. That's really cool. I've been walking around Minneapolis quite a bit and seeing creative chalk art myself. Um, fun trips to the store. People are savoring and enjoying getting out of their houses a little bit. So fun trips to the store. Uh, a person made a comment about finding a bird's nest. Uh, I'm sorry someone's bird had died, so I, I just wanted to acknowledge that. That's that's sad. I know uh, dealing with that, it's never fun. Uh, we had Jayla celebrated a birthday. I'll call you out. Uh, Jayla, a great job. Happy birthday. Hi. Uh, roasted hot dogs and marshmallows. Oh, man. I'm on this little apartment. I uh, I don't have a fire pit, man, but I do walk outside quite a bit and I smell those uh, bonfires. So that sounds fun. Uh, a lot of boobies and YouTube, uh, YouTubing. Uh, someone got a new ping pong table. They've been playing that. Someone's been uh, enjoying sleeping until 2 p.m. and not getting in trouble about that. Uh, that's fine by me as long as you're doing your schoolwork and developing your own schedule, I guess. People are out rollerblading, nature walks, video games again, Super Smash Brother. Someone is uh, having fun playing Just Dance with their family, so getting active with that. Playing with their dog was repeated a whole bunch. And some, I forget who it was, but somebody had baby kittens. Their cat had baby kittens, and that's really exciting. So that was fun reading that list. I just wanted to shout those out because maybe some of us would have some creative ideas um, from that to do ourselves. All right, agenda number six was show and tell. 
uh, you, you, you probably remember from class, I would oftentimes have a slideshow. Of my, I'd show Mercury all the time, sometimes just share with you things I've done. Um, and so I, I'm going to continue doing that. I've got my personal computer, and so I can kind of, uh, while the video is being recorded, I can show with you my slideshow. This was one of you. I forget who, who did this, and I didn't ask um, permission, so I just thought I'd show it. Here is uh, someone's four-wheeler getting taken apart and repaired. That's pretty cool. Here's my brother and Mercury. You probably, want, some of you might be interested in seeing how he's doing. He's doing really well. I went and saw him and he hadn't seen me for a while. So he was really excited. He was chasing me around. And so that's about as close as he could get. I, I ran away from him. So it was a little game because we're social distancing as well, but keeping our distance. That's him and his mom, Amanda. Um, and then here we went on a little walk and uh, we I saw a turkey. This is in Minneapolis. All right. So show and tell. Um, kind of going back to the agenda item, I'm going to create every week, I'm going to create a new uh, assignment where you can choose to submit pictures of you uh, doing things outside or projects you're working on or whatever it is you're interested in. Some things that I, I checked in with the office, the administration, our assistant principal, uh, Mr. Hoffman, he said, it's fine. Just be, be, be very clear with students. You can't have student contact information, addresses, um, and that can't be shared. But if you're doing fun things or working on projects that you want to share with us, I will download those pictures, put them on my computer in a slideshow, and uh, every day uh, I'll show a few of them. I won't do them all at once, but I'll show a few of those uh, um, uh, every day as a way to kind of contact again with each other. I know I've gotten a lot of feedback from students that were missing each other and I get that. We're all social creatures. All right, the last one is I'm going to play a blues song for you. So show and tell, get into Schoology every day. If you want to share, uh, you can. I woke up this morning. I couldn't get out of bed. So the coffee I started pouring helped to ease this terrible dread. So here I am. And so are you. Just doing it for the gram. About to give my pancakes a chew. <laughs> All right. I, I recognize uh, day one's uh, video was a bit somber. It was serious. I was feeling a bit serious, but wanted to bring it back. I'm not always feeling so serious, but I wanted to make sure you, you thought about those uh, people in your lives you should give a call, a call to. All right, I'm going to get to uh, reading Jerry Spinelli's, Jerry Spinelli's Loser, Chapter 13, Waiting. Andrew's father must have gotten a raise because by the time Zinkoff enters third grade, Andrew is gone, moved to a place outside of town called Heatherwood. To a house with a driveway and a front yard with a tree, Zinkoff hears. In November of, of third grade, Zinkoff goes through the worst period in all his eight years. He has surgery. He goes into the hospital and they put him to sleep and the doctor turns the upside down valve in his stomach right side up. The good news is that he stops throwing up. The bad news is that he has to miss three weeks of school. He drives his mother crazy. Heaven, help me every 10 minutes. <laughs> I wonder which of you are hearing your families say, heaven, help me, and are driving their folks and families mad. <laughs> that might be a reflection question coming up. On the second day after returning home from the hospital, he tries to sneak off to school. So his mother creates an alarm. She places the alarm in front of the front door. If her son ever tries to leave, the alarm goes off. The alarm is Polly. Polly is 17 months old by now. She speaks very little at this point, but one thing she does say is, bye-bye. She says it distinctly. In effect, she shouts it. And she says it whenever she sees someone leaving the house. Each morning, Mother Zinkoff padlocks the back door. Then she wheels the playpen up against the front door and places Polly inside. Then she goes about her chores, ready to come running whenever she hears, Bye-bye! It happens only once. Mrs. Z comes running to find her son halfway out the door and Polly yelling, Bye-bye! At the top of her lungs, she also finds a chocolate cupcake mashed in Polly's hand. 
a bribe. <laughs> Once Zinkoff understands that escape is impossible, he considers other ways to spend his time. This is critical because time sits on Zinkoff's hands like an elephant. He hates to wait. He hates waiting more than anything else. To Zinkoff, waiting means basically this, not moving. He hates waiting in lines. He hates waiting for the, bed, the bathroom to clear out. He hates waiting for answers, for toast to pop up, for bathtubs to fill, for soup to heat, soup to cool, car rides to end. Most of all, he hates sleep, the curse of the human race. Every night he protests it. Every morning he gets out of it as soon as he can. In fact, as far as Zinkoff is concerned, he doesn't really sleep. He merely waits all night until it's time to get up. If pressed, he will admit to going to bed, but not to sleep. Relatives and other grown-ups have discovered that they can amuse themselves by asking him, So, Donald, when did you go to bed last night? Nine o'clock. And when did you go to sleep? I didn't. You mean you didn't sleep all night? Nope. Whenever his Uncle Stanley comes over, he proclaims at full voice, Aha! There he is! The sleepless wonder. Then there are the sitting things, watching movies and reading books and hours in the classroom. Like sleeping, these two are non... Like, like sleeping, these two are non-movers, but not entirely. For as long as they keep his interest, of course. No, oh, for as long as they keep his interest. As long as they make him think Zinkoff, Zinkoff is moving. Of course, you wouldn't know it to look at him, since the moving part is out of a sight behind his unblinking eyes. His brain. This is how Zinkoff, at the age of eight, imagines the inside of his head. A moving part, like an elbow or a knee. He imagines that when he's interested, when he's thinking, his brain is moving, stretching itself, leaning this way and that, flexing. When his brain stops moving, that is when he's bored, off goes the TV, closed goes the book, and turned out goes the and tuned out goes the teacher. Zinkoff's blessing has been this. Boredom has not happened often. But it happens a lot during his three weeks of convalescing. That means healing. Every day he looks out the front window at the kids going off to John W. Satterfield Elementary. Not only is he not allowed to go to school, he is forbidden to do anything more active than walk across a room. His world shrinks to the living room sofa. He soon becomes fed up with TV and books, fed up with jigsaw puzzles and water colors, fed up with feeling the stitches of his operation. Minute after minute, day after endless day, he stares out the front window and the elephant lowers itself onto his hands. And he comes to know the long wait of the waiting man. You remember that last chapter when he was delivering mail to the waiting man. Sad story. He comes to know how painful a minute can be, how unbearable an hour. Though he cannot put his understanding into words, he understands that time by itself is nothing. It is emptiness, and that a person is not made for emptiness. One day he counts as 32 minutes go by on the clock, and he says to himself as he looks out the window, 32 years. He tries to cast his brain like a stone that far, 32 years into the future, but all it falls into is an immense gray sadness. He knows it is not his own sadness, but the sadness of the waiting man. It is everywhere, on the roof shingles and rain spouts and brick Walls and alleyways and the sadness and the emptiness are the same thing, and they will not end until a soldier comes walking down Willow Street. Zinkoff turns from the window. He feels an urgent need to play with his babysitter. He plays with her for an hour or two and makes her laugh. And then, because, st because still he cannot go to school, he decides the school must come to him. He will give himself a test. I wonder what that test will be. I think it's funny that his 18-month-old sister is his, baby sister, uh, his babysitter. And I think it's, he's such a curious eight-year-old boy. 
how he thinks about the world, how he thinks uh, his brain is a moving part like an elbow or a knee. I really like this book, and I'm curious to see where it goes. Don't forget, uh, after this, you are supposed to read for 20 minutes. After this, you are supposed to move on to phase two of liberation of Nazi camps and uh, submit that by Sunday. So I've had questions. I will think of a way next week, starting with our next project, how to be more clear on due dates. So uh, previously this week, you should have submitted last week's work um, and, uh, and this week's work, liberation of Nazi can concentration camps should be submitted by Sunday. So finish up, follow the directions at the top of the document and share that with me. Don't forget there's that Google uh, Schoology communication issue. So it's not a Google assignment. You were supposed to click the link. It copies into your Google document and then you have to click share at the top right with me. You just type in J Ermer, my uh, email address, or just type start typing Ermer and you'll see my uh, email address pop up. And that's all there is to it. Uh, I'm glad uh, uh, we're going to have a wonderful day. I think these clouds Tuesday uh, morning at about 11.30 it is. Those are still kind of gray and cloudy out. They're going to be burning off, as they say, and the sun's going to shine. And it's going to be 67 degrees out, and I'm going for a run at about 3.30. So keep on emailing me. If you want to talk to me, uh, let me know, and I'll give you a call. Bye, everybody.